All right, quick look at half-life calculations. Uh, we need a formula to be able to do some of these. We can see that uh, the amount remaining n is equal to the starting amount, n sub-zero, times 0.5 to the power of the number of half-lives. <clears throat> you can determine how many half-lives have passed by token, taking the total amount of time from the problem, dividing that by the length of just one half-life. And this is just a graphical representation of what's happening. Look, after one half-life has passed, you've gone from 100% to 50% of what you started with. After a second half-life, now you're down to 25%, and that continues to cut in half until the sample completely uh, turns into the new substance. Okay. So let's look at a couple problems. Uh, if we have an isotope that has a half-life of 150 years, what percent of the original material is left after 600 years? Well, the key word we're looking for to figure out what we're starting with is either going to be something that has grams or milligrams of mass in it or a percent. When it asks us to determine what percent is left over, that's going to be 100%. We start with 100% of something and it decays from there. So 100% times... 0.5 for the half-life part of it. Now we just need the number of half-lives that have passed. Well, if you remember from the formula, the number of half-lives is equal to total time divided by one half-life. Well, one half-life was 150 years. So one half-life always goes at the bottom, and the total amount of time always goes at the top. So 600 years was the other number from the problem. We know that that is four half-lives that have passed. So in the calculator, our 100% gets multiplied by 0.5. The exponent is this little caret button right here to the fourth power. 6.25% remains. So as we saw on the last screen, that should follow what we'd expect. <clears throat> After four half-lives, one, two, three, four, you do see that 6.25% of what you started with remains. If the half-life of zinc-71 is 2.4 minutes <clears throat> and you have 100 grams at the beginning, how many grams would you be left with? Okay, well this time, beginning amount is 100.0 grams multiplied by 0 0.5 always. Now we need to know how many half-lives have passed. Well, we know that a total of 7.2 minutes has passed. And we know that one half-life is 2.4 minutes. So that gives us three half-lives that have gone by. And that's 100, 0 times 0.5 to the third power, or 12.5. Now we've got to be careful with significant figures here. Um, the things that matter are the time units and the mass that you have. Well, the limiting one here would be the time units. There's two significant figures in each. So <clears throat> we would round our answer of 6.25. That was 6.25. And we'd round that to two significant figures, one, two. We got a five doing the rounding. That means that it determined, it's determined if this is even or odd. Well, this is even, so... 6.2 grams would be our answer. And if you need more help on that, view the video on significant figures and rounding significant figures. Finally, the half-life of isotope X is 2.0 years. How many years would it take for a 4.0 milligram sample of X to decay and have only 0.50 milligrams to remain? Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to start breaking this thing down in halves until you get to the number of half-lives that you need. So if I start with 4.0 milligrams, I know that after one half-life has passed, I'm down to 2.0 milligrams because by definition, each half-life, you get half of what you started with. Well, after a second half-life, this is going to break down to 1.0 milligrams. And then a third half-life will take it to 0 0.50 milligrams. 
So we see that we've got it broken down from where it started to where it ended, and that took three half-lives. Well, if one half-life is two years, that's 2.0 years, that took another 2.0 years, and that took another 2.0 years, three of the 2.0 years would just equal 6.0 years for this to happen.